Hey Minecraft viewers, this is Chetali today. I am back with another episode of Minecraft. And today I have not one but two really awesome guests for you. Yep, we are going to have a three way chat today. My two guests, I met both of them through online card classes, and I saw both of their creations uh, almost every week on Runway Inspired Challenge. And I was totally interested in having each of them individually as a guest on Ironcraft, but then they both started a company together. So I had to get them together on one episode to talk about everything about their, you know, how their crafting careers were, and especially about Altenew. Do you know who I'm talking about? All right, let's go and meet them. Hi, Jan, and hi, Tasneem. Hi. <laughs> hey. Hello. <laughs> hey, thank you so much, both of you, for joining in and craft today. And it's awesome to have two of you together on the episode. Thanks yeah. for having us. Cool. <laughs> All right, so um, let's start with you, Jen. Uh, tell us what your big crafting break was. What was the you know one moment when you felt like, oh my God, this is awesome. I want to keep going in this hobby, and uh, this is really cool. Well, I feel like when I first started, I probably like a lot of you out there, I had no idea what I was doing, and I kind of felt like more was more. I would just put a whole bunch of stuff on a card, and they're really horrible. I, I don't want you to go back in the blog and look at my first posts because it's really kind of embarrassing. But eventually, I really felt like I clicked with the style, and I feel like the moment when I knew that, you know, this is really what I want to do is when I was asked to be a part of, or I was selected to be a part of the Gallery Idol competition a few years ago. Mm -hmm. And that's just the biggest deal to me. I could, I could not believe that I was chosen among so many entries. So I feel like that was probably my big break, my big moment to shine. Very cool. Very nice. And then you have been uh, submitting to magazines and uh, also been on a, a Gallery Idol quite a few times too, right, after that as well? Yeah, it, it's almost embarrassing with that too because I've been... <laughs> And I think I do worse each year. So oh, I... no, you don't. You just have to stick with it. I'm sure this is going to be your year. It's coming up really soon. <laughs> yeah, I may not apply. I'm not sure. But if I do, I, I don't know. I'm not getting my hopes up that I'll be picked again because four in a row, that, that's crazy. Well, <laughs> your, your own stamps are the lucky charm, right? You use your own stamps and then you get through. <laughs> All right, so Tasneem, um, question to you again uh, is uh, the same one kind of, but I read your very interesting blog post about your first experience in going and buying stamps. So tell us about how you got started into paper crafting. Sure. Uh, this was about four years ago. My husband had took me to Michael's to get some mm -hmm. art supplies. Mm -hmm. And I just bought some papers because at that time, that's really what I used before prior to my stamping just papers and I would make cards and bookmarks using papers and I didn't know what else to get you can imagine <laughs> then uh, when I got home my husband showed me he bought two woodblock stamps for me and I wasn't sure how to use them I knew like I had to get some ink pads eventually so I went back to get some ink pads and I saw like there are so many different kinds and I ended up taking two that were, that were on clearance and they didn't really work that well I also that was my first time I saw some clear stamps. At the time, I didn't know what they were, but you know they looked uh, nice and pretty. So I was like, "Oh, let me try these as well." And I did not buy any clear blocks to go with them since I didn't know, you know how they worked. And I actually tried to stamp with my hands <laughs> using the clear stamps, and I was like, "Oh, this is difficult. Oh, this is not fun at all." <laughs> and you try like uh, CD cases or some. Uh, uh, you know, most I have heard like all sorts of ingenious methods, like on a book or something. <laughs> no, I didn't try any of that. I thought like, oh, these are just stamps, and I was just inking with my hand. And mm -hmm. later, I saw a video of someone using some clear stamps. I was like, oh, okay, so you need the clear blocks. And I went back to get some clear blocks, and uh, I bought one for each set because I thought I would have to store the clear stamps on the clear blocks, like the oh. wood blocks. <laughs> 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 yeah, that was my introduction. But eventually, I. I learned about the company called Close to My Heart and saw they had this amazing collection of clear stamps and I was like, wow, this is amazing and that's when the buying started. <laughs> and also your uh, collection of stamp blocks increased too? <laughs> exactly, yes. Within, it's skyrocketed within the first year. <laughs> wow, <laughs> nice. 
And, uh, and I see Jens also has a big collection behind her and Jens' craft room is visible. So uh, did your collection also grow similarly? I know my craft room is behind me too. <laughs> it did, absolutely. Nice. Oh, I like your necklace. I can see it uh, more clearly now and it's awesome. It's scissors. Yeah, um, they do open and close. Oh, know. they do? Wow, that's awesome. That's oh, a perfect wow. necklace <laughs> for uh, wearing on a craft video. <laughs> nice. All right, so tell me about how did you both meet? You both uh, uh, decided to start a company together, so you must have known each other for a while. So when was uh, the first time you both you know, got acquainted, and how did you both get together to be business partners? Um, do you want to talk, Tazim? <laughs> yeah, you go ahead. You go ahead. <laughs> you can answer the first part. <laughs> well, I actually found out about her work when she was submitting to the – the Runway Inspired Challenge, and I'm sure that you'll agree that her work is just phenomenal. So when it was time to pick new design team members, I knew that she was one of my first choices, and I was so happy when she agreed to be on the Runway team. So mm -hmm. that's kind of how I became to know more about her. Awesome. And well, then I was really, really happy when they picked me. I was like, wow, that was my big moment. I was like, yay, nice. <laughs> on the Runway Inspired Challenge team. And um, as for you know, starting the company together, I think we both have been thinking about starting company for some time, I mean, if separately. And for me, it was about a year ago that I started you know, thinking seriously about it. And I think about six months ago, we kind of talked about that our sim you know, similar interest. And you know, Jennifer is an amazing artist, and I knew she would be a like, great asset to the company, so I just, you know, Told her like, why don't you do this together? You know, we join our forces and we'll be awesome together. <laughs> awesome, that's great. You are awesome together, by the way. <laughs> and that actually brings us to uh, talking more about Altenew. Um, I want to first know how you came up with the name, and uh, were there other names in consideration? What were they? Well, I was hoping to keep that a secret, but since you asked, no problem. <laughs> no, no, no secrets yeah. on the video. <laughs> um, well, uh, the name came from, it actually came from another name that we had first in consideration. So to begin with, we both had our ideas, but we finally kind of settled on uh, now and then. We like mm -hmm. that name. Mm -hmm. But after some cons further consideration, we decided not to go with it. It just, um, we wanted a really unique name, you know, something you would search in Google and would come the first thing, you know, that would come up. Mm -hmm. So. You know, we had, it had to be like really unique, you know, something to make up maybe. So I decided, I started thinking about it. So similar to now and then, I was like, okay, now and then, then maybe similarly old and new. <laughs> and then uh, I, I'm uh, familiar with German a little bit, and old, old and new, you know, sounded a little hard to pronounce. So I said, okay, old, new, and then it's like alt, new sounds like nicer and yeah. I, I asked Jen like how does that sound and you're like yeah it sounds a little different like Altenew and we were like practicing it like how does it sound like Altenew stamps and it took us a little while and then we decided to just you know stick with it and you know go with the name. <laughs> nice so did you have to Jen did you have to say to it to yourself in the mirror a few times and uh, kind of get the roll of it on your tongue? I did I was calling my mom because obviously she knew about it and I'm like, oh, so we have this these new stamps for Altenew. And she's like, oh, is that the name of the company? I said, yeah, I'm just trying to get Nice. And it, it worked out well. So. Cool. That's a great name. So tell us more about some of your designs. Uh, I know you have, like, some very unique designs, and uh, I have been drooling over all of them since the sneak peek started. So tell us about inspiration stories behind a few of them. Pick, pick a favorite design for each of you and probably tell me more about it. Um, well, my favorite is the Sketchy Cities. Mm -hmm. And a while ago, I don't know how long, maybe even a year ago, just quite some time, I did a card on my blog and it was a hand-drawn skyline of Boston and I watercolored it and I got a really good response from it. And I love to sketch and draw, so it just seemed like a, a natural thing to do on a card. But I thought, you know, wouldn't it be even better if I can have this as a stamp so I don't have to take the time to draw it every single time? I so, know about what you're talking about. That's the card you made for the 10 embellishments challenge, isn't it? That was actually a different one. <laughs> that was, oh, that um, was a different one? Okay. <laughs> yeah, so that was a different skyline, similar card. So that was 
a Shanghai one. The other one was mm -hmm. Boston. But I grew up near uh, New York. I grew up on Long Island. So I would go into Manhattan all the time. And now I live near Boston and I go in Boston all the time. So I wanted mm -hmm. to kind of pay my respects to my two favorite cities and design <laughs> stamps for them. Very nice. Can, can, can we get an insider news on if more cities are coming in? I'm sure there will be. A lot of people have asked for more cities. I enjoy designing them, so. Cool. Yeah. I'll put in my vote as well. We want more cities. <laughs> nice. And what's your favorite one, Disney? Um, I have a few favorite ones, but let me talk about the dodecagram because a lot of people wonder what that name came from, and mm -hmm. you know, and I, and that's one of my favorites as well. The name is the name itself means uh, twelve pointed star, so mm -hmm. I. I designed, if you notice, the designs have uh, 12 pointed stars, and I wanted the name that uh, you know, resembled um, resemble the stars. And I searched, like, what you know, call, uh, like, you know, how you have five sided polygons that are called pentagons. And I said, there must be, like, some name because there are variations. There are five pointed stars, six pointed stars. And mm -hmm. I found out that the 12 pointed stars are called uh, dodecagram, so I ended up calling it that name. And um, yeah, I, I like about the, what I like about this set is it's uh, it's from architecture. Um, the design itself uh, emulates uh, architectural geometric designs from from I would say about the 12th century or, or to, to the 14th century. So it's kind of like looking back and then bringing those old designs into a mo into a new modern look. So I think and that's also kind of how our name of the company is. All, all to new, like all to new. <laughs> yeah. So that's yeah, that's that's about Joe Decagram. Getting the old and new together, very cool. Right. Uh, speaking of mathematical designs, and uh, you know uh, uh, all of the mathematical designs that you have, the other one I has a very interesting name as well, the Sokatoa set. Right. Do you know what it means? I'm sure you know what it means. I, I do know what it means, but I want you to <laughs> explain that to, to the audience. <laughs> okay. It was so, a very nice uh, private mathematical uh, joke, and I saw it. Right. Uh, um, actually, my sister came up with the name because uh, mm -hmm. it's just a set of, basically, if you look at it, it's just triangles. And there are other sets that are called triangles, and then I think there are some sets called trendy triangles. Right. And then I wanted something different, and then I, I asked my sister, do you have any ideas? And first thing she said was like Sokato. I was like, oh, that's awesome. So Sokato is basically the uh, uh, geometric term, right? It's an abbreviation to remember the um, the geometric rules, or the tangent and cosine and sine. If someone, like, you know, someone doesn't know what I'm talking about, it's basically how to calculate the angles of a triangle. Right. So that, that's where it comes from. <laughs> nice. So uh, I guess the, the lesson here is that uh, just pick up names from what's around you and what you know you know best and uh, right yes. set. <laughs> nice all right so uh, tell, tell us more about behind the scenes work at Altenew both of you what happens that you know we customers don't get to see what's the mad rush behind each release and how do you uh, go about fulfilling all our orders when we place it in sure it's um, do you want to go ahead Jennifer well, I was just going to say kind of the behind the scenes of even just getting ready to design. Um, mm -hmm. When we realized that we both wanted to start this company together, we put together a very lengthy ideas list. And mm -hmm. just anything that we could think of that we haven't seen before that we would love to see or things that already existed but we knew we could put our own twist on it. So we had that huge, massive list. And then we just went through and discussed what do we want to see first. We wanted to have a big release so that there will be lots of options and kind of something for everybody, no matter what your design style is. And we narrowed it down and then got to work um, designing. Now, for me, I'm so used to just taking a pencil and sketching in a sketchbook or doodling on the corner of my notebook pages. So the thought of having to make a drawing digital was really kind of complicated for me. So I tried lots of different things, um, designing in Photoshop and designing on the iPad. I actually have a stylus for my iPad um, with a brush end. I don't know if you've ever Ooh. seen those. But instead of like the rounded end, it actually has a brush. So it feel, felt very natural to just draw and paint essentially on the iPad with that. And then I ended up importing it into the software and editing it from there. So it's a really awkward process and I'm, I feel like I haven't streamlined it yet. But mm -hmm. as we go ahead and design more, I hope that I get more comfortable with the process. <laughs> nice. 
And then uh, what about the logistics of like, um, is there a mad rush firstly when you have a release and uh, you get in lots of orders the first few days? Well, uh, since it ju we just started, uh, I think about three weeks it has been, so mm -hmm. it's been my, it's only our first release. And yes, the first week was very, very busy, first, sorry, very, very busy. Um, we got a lot of orders on the first day, and it took me almost a week to fulfill them. And um, so basically what, I mean, a regular day would be like, um, I print out all the orders and mm -hmm. you know, package them up, I wrap the stamps in some nice tissue paper and you know, write mm -hmm. a little personal note, package them up and you know it goes, I, I keep track like you know, I mark off every um, single person like as I go up you know packaging it so I don't you know forget and then at the end of the day I go to the post office and mail them. <laughs> so wow. that's yeah so that's the you know order processing part and apart from that we're also thinking about you know doing new things like um, opening a YouTube channel and a gallery, so we're still working on a few things, yes. and of course, there we have to also still have to think about designs for future releases. So, so that's what's going feel, on at the moment. Uh, how does it feel like a few weeks after now starting a company, both of you? Um, it feels good. I know we had no idea what to expect. We're just kind yeah. of crossing our fingers, hoping that people would even want to buy them, and we were really uh, happy with you know, the response that we got from the paper crafting community. I couldn't ask for a better release for our first time. Awesome, awesome. And we're hoping to see a lot more awesome releases. It's something to look forward to. Nice. All right, so uh, tell me more about uh, what you guys do when you're not crafting. Uh, Jen, I know you have a job, you're a teacher, I think, and uh, you also designed a font for a movie. I saw that on your resume. I want to know more about that, too. Oh gosh, okay, so let's start, I guess, with the teaching. Uh -huh. I'm a country music teacher, so I teach first grade through fifth grade. I yeah. do um, strings, so I teach violins, I teach general music, and I teach chorus. So we have our concert coming up in like two weeks, so a lot of my brain right now is thinking about preparing for that concert. Cool. But in addition to, you know, doing the work stuff in school, I also teach private lessons after school, so I have a small studio of students and I teach piano and violin. Nice. It's awesome to have a very creative job too, right? It's channeling your creativity and paper crafting and also in uh, teaching music. It's the best job. It's so <laughs> rewarding to work with the kids. It's fun because I have a passion for music, and I like the schedule. I'll never complain about having a summer off or having a week off here or there in the middle of the year. It's the best. <laughs> Now, um, the, the font, font, that's the next thing, yes. <laughs> it's actually hilarious that you mention it because it was such like, I don't know, something I didn't go and try to do. It just kind of fell in my lap. So I had found a program a while ago, maybe year, like two years ago, and it was turn your handwriting into a font. So mm -hmm. you would print out this chart, and it has all the little boxes for each character. And then I just went in with the marker and just quickly filled it in. Like it was sloppy, it was messy, it was just an experiment. I wanted to see how it turned out. So I turned it into the font and then I uploaded it to defonts.com. I'm not sure if you're familiar with that site. Yep, yep. Mm -hmm. And I just offered it free for personal use and people started downloading it. Then I got this wow. email and someone said they wanted to use it for this movie they were making. And, Ooh. <laughs> and, and they paid me and they, they put my name in the credits and it was really cool. They used it for, I think, the opening credits. And then um, one of the is for promotional, um, they had the font up there with the name of the, the movie. Nice. So did you stay on till the end of the movie to see a name in the credits? I This is really horrible. I never actually watched the movie. <gasps> oh. <laughs> yes. It was kind of one of those direct-to-DVD releases. Mm -hmm. I think there was maybe one or two people who are, like, mildly famous, not even anyone you've ever heard of. The movie is called Lifted. So if you want to look it up, you can. I watched the first few minutes, and I, I didn't really like it. <laughs> <laughs> well, your font got used in a movie. That's that's the big thing, and that's awesome that they just contacted you, you know, just like that, and uh, your font is in there. Great. Okay. The name. Your turn now. You can't escape. You have to tell us more about knowing multiple languages. Oh, oh well. Uh, so I grew up uh, learning. Um, 
sorry, I grew up speaking Bengali and Arabic. I went to Arab, uh, Arabic school, mm -hmm. and I knew a little bit of English at the time. And when I was about 14, I switched to English school, and that's when I learned English. So basically, I'm kind of fluent in three languages. But and but I have always been interested in learning new languages. So when I was in high school, I would just you know learn different phrases from different languages. I had a little um, what do you call those electric electronic dictionaries, and mm -hmm. they would have the same word in different languages, and it was like really fun for me to play with. And I learned a little bit of Spanish when I was in high school, just all by myself, not through the school. And later on in college, I took some German classes. And yeah, so just you know. So how many languages here. can you say hello in? Oh, hello would be a, quite a number of languages, but uh, I would I wouldn't say them right now though. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, hello, thank you. I know more than three or four, five languages, but wow, yeah. <laughs> nice. That's awesome. That's great knowing so many languages. And the other thing I wanted to ask was, you have also studied engineering, right, in uh, UMass Amherst. Tell us, right. tell us about uh, uh, studying engineering and how that has, you know, helped in uh, your sure. crafting hobby and how does it carry sure. over? Uh, definitely. I studied mechanical engineering and for those of you who don't know much about it, it's basically, you know, you design things in mechanical, for example, a table or chair, I mean, anything around you, it probably some engineer designed it. <laughs> so, uh, and I really love the designing part of it and we used to have like semester long projects and where you'd there's a big challenge almost you can call it and uh, you know there's a problem you have you're about to solve it you know you interview people and you come up with a solution like a new design improved design and those are my favorite classes so I guess that really you know conveys into how I really enjoy card making I love the challenge part of it and you're know, designing new things so yeah the, it's all related. <laughs> nice. That's. I think that carries over perfectly to your uh, style as well, right? It. Uh, it's very technical. It's very clean, and uh, you plan a lot. I can see in your cards that you do plan it out a lot before you know you're making it. So great. Yeah, yeah. I do plan. I keep. I think about the card before I make it. I you know because I only have some limited time, so I need to like think and. You know, make sure what I really want before I go into the craft room. I can't just, you know, stay there and think and think. So, yeah, I have to pre-plan <laughs> ahead of time. Awesome. Okay. Um, so I had a few general questions, uh, you know, from I'm craft viewers before, and I thought you two would be the perfect people to ask these questions too because you are already answering questions for online craft classes. Um, so Jen, you first. Um, the question for you is about embossing on vellum. Uh, I know you have done some embossing on vellum before. I saw one awesome card very recently for uh, Alton New. Uh, so tell us, how do you emboss on it without it curling up and messing up the entire look of it? Um, I feel like with embossing on vellum, you definitely need to keep the heat gun further away and move it around constantly. And I like to heat the front and then I flip it over and I heat the back and that usually allows things to lay flat and having mm -hmm. less direct heat um, prevents it from yellowing because I don't know if you've ever blasted some vellum with a heat gun and it just yep. kind of starts to get that gross yellowy color. Yep, so, yep, and it also like just curls up and folds over on all sides and you can't really fix it by putting a glue behind it because it's just not going to stick down, you'll see all the glue through it. Yeah, so even heating, just go over the whole thing, front and back, and mm -hmm. just keep gun moving. Cool, very cool tip. So that seems the same thing embossing powder related for you. How do you store your embossing powders? Well, to tell you the truth, I don't own that many embossing powders, so most of my embossing powders are still in the containers they come in, but I do have a couple where which I keep in... Um, a little, you know, disposable flat containers, and those are really easy. I, I keep a disposable spoon inside as well, and all you have to do is just, you know, shake the powder over your card. You don't have to transfer between, you know, scrap paper, scratch paper and your container. So I would say, like, if you have enough space, you would go for the containers, but my space is really limited, so I just, you know, keep my embossing powder in the containers they come in. <laughs> and how do you put it back in there after after using it? Do you tap it off on a paper and then just slide it in again? 
Yes, I always use a extra paper to catch my embossing powder, mm -hmm. and then I just you know take the paper and then you know just put it down <laughs> inside the container. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. Uh, Jen, this is not a question coming from you know I'm crap audience, but I am really really curious. What is that wooden plank like surface you use uh, for photographing your cards? Um, it's actually not wood at all. Um, let's see. Ooh. It's paper. Oh, it's pattern paper. Oh. That's a cool idea. <laughs> it's on side my mind's eye. And I have a few of them. This is the one I use most often just because it's like a nice neutral color. But I have just plain wooden pattern paper in lots of different colors that I have used in the past, either behind the card or sometimes I'll lay it flat and put the card on, on top of the planks. Nice. Nice. That's a cool idea. Like if you don't have a wooden table and you still want to get that kind of a look, this is a great way to get that look as well. Great. And then Tasneem, uh, what is the strangest embellishment you've used on your cards? Well, it's funny that you asked that because <laughs> I don't normally use many embellishments. So no, I that's why I wanted to know what is the strangest <laughs> so one. I had to go back and look at my cards to see where I had used embellishments. And I think one of the strangest one, I think I would kind of call it just strange, was uh, I wanted to make a, a handbag and mm -hmm. I needed something for the handle of the handbag. And I went to the dollar store and bought some like metallic bracelet, and I used that chain as the chain of my handbag. And I think, oh. yeah, that was probably the <laughs> strangest embellishment. <laughs> yeah. Nice, great story. <laughs> All right. So now is the time for the rapid fire round, and this time we are going to do a three-way rapid fire round, so that I will ask either of you a question. So be ready, both of you. Are you both ready for this? I guess. This is the part I was nervous about, so I'm sorry if I hesitate. Okay. Good but morning, don't morning ahead of time. It is, it, is rapid fire. <laughs> it is the rapid fire. You both have to be ready for it. Okay. Um, all right. The theme, you first. If you could learn to play any musical instrument, what would it be? And, and note that I'm asking you this, not Jen. <laughs> okay. I think it would be either the piano or the violin. Cool. Do you know to play them now? No, I know nothing, absolutely none. <laughs> but I love how, the, how they sound, yeah. <laughs> okay, awesome. Jen, name one dish you find really difficult to cook. Um, uh, French macarons. <laughs> cool. <laughs> Have you tried cooking it and did it end in any disaster? I tried once and they were amazing. I'm like, wow, I should do this for a living. I'm awesome. And then I tried twice since and they were absolute disasters. I think I had to get this. <laughs> <laughs> you should retire early when you have one success and be like, oh, this is, I have made the best dish ever. <laughs> yeah, they are, That's what I, do. I That's what wanted to eat them after the second and third try. And that says a lot because he'll eat anything. <laughs> <laughs> nice. All right, uh, the same, this one's for you. Uh, one tool that never leaves your desk. The paper trimmer? Yeah, I'm always cutting paper. Okay, that, yeah. that's a staple tool. Jen, one tool you thought was total value for money. Wait, one tool that what? You thought was total value for money. You did not regret buying it at all. You'd recommend it to anyone. Hey, my paper trimmer. Hey, I that's copying an answer. <laughs> but it's tonic. Here. Yeah, that's true. Oh, it's the it's the the nicer one. Oh wow. This one. And it was more of an investment. In the past, I had used the ones with the blade that slides. Mm -hmm. in right, the scarce one that you pull down. Which I know works for some people, but I couldn't get it to work for me. So I like this a lot. This was a good investment. Cool. I'm going to clip out this uh, part of the video and show it to my husband and tell him that Jen uh, has recommended this, so I have to absolutely have it now. <laughs> OK, and now you both need to pose for the camera. Jen, do you want to go first, too? Sure. How many poses do we have? Three poses. <laughs> Three poses each. So Three poses. go ahead. Pose one. Okay. <laughs> okay. That's one. Okay. <laughs> okay, that's two. Um I can't think of anything else. All right, that's three. Tasneem, it's your turn now. 
<clears throat> okay. <clears throat> Thinking. All right, that's one. Um, happy. Cool. Do. <laughs> Mm. Wow. <laughs> That's three. <laughs> awesome. Thank you, Glady. I, I didn't think about my poses. <laughs> That's okay. That's supposed to be really spontaneous. So both of you did awesome. All right. So um, now, since this is Iron Craft, uh, it was my turn to get crafty with both of you this time. And of course, we used Altenew. Uh, we used the simple uh, shape set. And I couldn't be happier about using this set. And I'll talk more when I show you guys my card that I thought it was a really well-designed set. Uh, and then the other thing I wanted to also show was the packaging. This is, like, so inspirational. I saved this. And you're going to see it featured on probably one of my cards soon. Uh, I totally saved this paper for some special card. And uh, all three of us created cards using that set. Do you guys have your cards ready? Yes, I do. Awesome. All right, let's show it to people. Three, two, one. Where's yours, Tasneem? <laughs> oh, you have two of them. Go I ahead have... and tell oh, us wow. about them. <laughs> Jen, you first. Tell us more about your cards. Okay, I made two because I didn't really like the first one. Here's the first one I made. Why didn't you like it? <laughs> I don't know. I wasn't feeling it. So then I made this okay. one. Okay. And I like this one more. And this one has vellum, but I didn't emboss on it. I just oh. Made, but this part is vellum. Oh, I see. And then on the vellum, did you just stamp on the vellum then with the labels? I did, yeah. So mm -hmm. I wanted to show how you can use the simple shapes to make a background pattern. Nice. And I used the label on the front. And then on this one, I used just the diamond to make this focal nice. point. I like both of them. I like the colorful one. It's really yeah, awesome. they're both gorgeous. Yeah. yeah. All right, that name shows yours. Sure. I, I went for a very simple card. Um, can you see it? Here. Oh, um, the colors are not very clear, but we have better pictures. Oh, on the My lighting is really not very good. So I know this, uh, the shapes in this set, you know, they go well together, you know, in making patterns. and. Mm -hmm. But I wanted to try something different, so I took one of the diamond stamps and stamped randomly in two colors. Mm -hmm. So you can see it's kind of like a cascading uh, shapes falling, and I just, you know, complemented with a label of um, label I mean, st sentiment. Cool, awesome. Uh, they both, all three of the cards that you both have shown me look really stunning. I'm kind of uh, embarrassed to show my card, but uh, I think I will just have to go ahead with it. So um, I saw all of these cool shapes that you both have been putting out, the tangrams, and um, I wanted to make one uh, card with that. Uh, but then I started thinking of like what shape to pick, and it became really difficult to pick any uh, one tangram to uh, make on my card. So what I did was I made an interactive card, and you can actually move these pieces around. Um, so what oh, I wow. <laughs> Thank you. So what I used was uh, this is magnetic uh, adhesive paper from uh, Silhouette. Uh, you can get it on the Silhouette America store. And this is a uh, printable uh, magnetic paper, so it's really thin. Like, if you take it out, it's really thin. You went all out. That's amazing. <laughs> yep. And then I just stamped on that paper, cut out these images. It's very easy to cut, like, just with the scissors, and these are basic shapes. Uh, so then uh, it basically, it's a great card to give, you know, uh, one of somebody on their birthday, like a kid or something. Uh, I know a lot of people who would really love to play. I would love to get that card. <laughs> <laughs> and this is where I think the set was really well designed because um, I'm, I'm a stamp illustrator too and I know that uh, you cannot reflect images even it's a stamp. You can rotate them but you can't reflect them. Uh, and in a tangram you need this, uh, this parallelogram image which has to be a mirror image sometimes. So if you see carefully on the card I have eight rather than seven uh, patterns here. And the reason for that is some shapes you make with this one and some shapes you make with this parallelogram. <laughs> so. so glad that you did that. I didn't know if people really knew what tangrams were, but I remember as a kid using them a lot in math 
And yep, yep. It's a them. great way to learn about different shapes too. I think it's, uh, uh, and I did stamp them like in different colors because I know uh, I'm probably going to give this card to like a five or six year old and uh, I'm sure uh, he's going to be really happy about just moving the colorful shapes around and making things from it. Mm -hmm. Cool. Neat. Thank you, thank you so much. Um, I'm gonna uh, put it in a nicer shape for a few photos, then uh, let's see what all shapes I come up with. So today, Altenew is sponsoring our giveaway for Handcraft. Thank you, ladies. Um, one lucky winner, actually two lucky winners, are going to get a copy each of two different stamp sets from Altenew because we have two guests. Um, so one can get a copy of the simple shape set that we both we all three use today in our cards. And the other person is going to get a copy of the dodecagram set uh, that we talked about in our interview. Um, so what you have to do is just answer the questions that uh, Jen and Tasneem are going to ask us. Jen, what is your question? Um, I was wondering, what is your favorite TV show? Cool. And Tasneem, what is your question? My question is, uh, what would you like to see in our future releases? Awesome. So uh, people answer both of the questions, uh, choose to answer them both, and tell us, you know, what your favorite TV show is and also what you would like to see from Altenew. You know, it does sound uh, that they're both not related, but if you do answer both of them, you are going to get a stamp set about your favorite TV show, maybe. So uh, tell us what that is. And again, thank you, ladies, for joining in for I'm Craft today. It was so much fun doing an interview with both of you together. And th oh, thank you very much for ha having us. Cool. Thank you. And thank you, I'm Craft viewers, for watching this episode. I will be back next week with another episode of I'm Craft. See ya. Mm -hmm.